Hello everybody, my name is Thunder and today I'll be doing a three-month review of the Gaumon S620. Gaumon sent me this tablet free of charge to review, which might surprise you as I haven't uploaded in three years. Uh, now you may be wondering, why did they provide you with a review sample with that track record? Well, I did a small random livestream recently where I was painting some character art for the game called Canyon, which by the way, is now released by your wishlist on Steam. Yeah, I had them reach out to me for some reason after that, and I don't know why they thought sending one out to me was a good idea, judging from my dead channel, but oh well. Of course, they didn't intend to send me a new one to review, well, understandable. They had a customer that wanted a replacement because of a barely visible scratch on the frame, sent the used tablet to me directly. Funnily enough, the customer didn't send me the pen and cable for it at first, just the tablet itself. So I tried it out with my Huion pen and that actually worked, but yeah. Oh well. After a while I got the cable and pen in the end and then I could finally properly test this thing. Overall kind of sketchy process, but hey, I absolutely understand with my channel. Yeah. Um, now let's move on and first look at their website to find out some things about this tablet. So yeah, you can buy it of course. Uh, your inspirations ripples right from here. Always strive to help you achieve more. Wait a minute. This thing looks huge over here. Look at these tiny hands. What the hell is this? Okay, you know, this is kind of misleading. Let's actually, you know, look at the real thing and just get on with the review. So this thing retails for 45 bucks right now on Amazon and it has a 7.6 inch diagonal drawing area. A battery-free pen, which is very important, by the way. You don't want to have to charge some weird battery that then someday dies in your pen. Uh, and yeah, it has a few buttons on the tablet and the pen itself. I'll be reviewing this tablet from the perspective of an artist that uses the tablet at a desk next to a keyboard and mouse. I've been using it for three months now and have also created some artwork for Cold Canyon on it, like all achievement icons and some character artwork and more stuff. The 7.6 inch make it a little bit small for my taste, but I got used to it after a while. I would really recommend a bigger tablet, however, it's just more comfortable for drawing to have something bigger than that, uh, and also will probably be better for your hand health if you draw a lot. Now you may be wondering, it's cheap, it's small, can you play Osu on this thing? And yes, you can! If you just buy this thing for playing Osu, the size may actually be absolutely perfect. It's pretty cheap and it's a decent graphics tablet too, so you can't really go wrong here if you buy it for this purpose. Now, you may also be wondering if it can play Osu, can also play the other very important rhythm game on the market, you know? Beat Saber! No, of course not. Anyway, overall it's just a big piece of plastic. It doesn't feel too bad, but it doesn't feel premium either. The feet on the bottom are pretty pathetic. They could have stuck on some larger ones for better grip. Galmon, please fix. Now, moving on to the buttons. They feel pretty cheap, but I don't use them anyway. You know, I have some perfectly fine buttons, two centimeters to the left of it. Some other tablets have extra thick bezels on the sides to rest your hands on, which is really, really nice and feels much better than having your hand hanging on the edge of a tablet the entire time. And it's very much necessary for screen tablets to have some bezel, in my opinion. However, the plus side of the design on the Gaumon here with the slim bezels, it, that it's really, really compact. And you have way more space for your mouse and keyboard, especially when you're not using your tablet. So really, I'd say this is personal preference if you want a thick bezel or not. One thing, however, which is a huge sin in this thing is the micro USB port. Oh my God, what the hell is this? I mean, okay, it's a cheap device, but still, it's 2020. Everything should have USB Type-C. And even worse, they included a right-angled micro-USB cable for this, which of course can only go to the left now, so if you want it to go to the right, well, too bad, you can't. The best option for a clean desk and a portability here would be wireless functionality, which at this price point, uh, of course I can understand that it's not here. Uh, the LED in the logo is a very nice touch. It shows when it detects the pen, but it's super dim, which is actually great because it doesn't annoy you while you're still drawing at 3 a.m., but you can still see it because it's bright enough for that. The driver didn't start on its own after the first install, so I had to reinstall it to make it work right out of the box when I reboot the PC. Otherwise I had to start it manually all the time, which is pretty annoying. 
Oh yeah, uh, by the way, this tablet also works plug and play on Linux thanks to the open source Digimon drivers. So yeah, if you're a Linux user, I tested this on Manjaro. I hope that helps. The pen is very nice. It does what it's supposed to do, but of course the super expensive Pro Pen 2 by Wacom feels nicer, but it's also a lot more expensive. The, the pen here is rubberized in the part where it matters and it has some nice buttons that actually work. Also, it has very nice pressure for this price and works wirelessly, as I said before, no like battery is required. As it sounds like I have a lot of negatives to say here about this thing, I should probably remind you that this thing is really, really cheap. And for this price, it is pretty amazing with no big drawbacks, really. Also, I should probably show how one would make a perfect tablet from the starting point of the S620, in my opinion, of course. First, make the S620 a little bigger. Second, remove any seams from the top to not catch any debris and dust. Three, take a look at those buttons and remove them. Why? Well, you most likely have a keyboard. Also, these buttons just get in the way of the compact design. Yes, some might actually like buttons, but for those you could make a separate model with more and better buttons. Fourth, burn the micro USB port in hell. And add a USB-C port, maybe even Bluetooth, with about a month of battery life at best, for a very clean look. Either with an integrated battery or for long life of the device with support for rechargeable AAA batteries. Fifth, touch support would also be great. Using a tablet as a trackpad sometimes is quite nice. Sixth, improve the pen by adding tilt support, more premium materials and even better pressure sensitivity. And so on. I, I guess you can always improve pens. Seventh, Add a pen loop to the top of the tablet that can firmly hold the pen when thrown into a backpack, for example. Since it's so compact, it should also kind of have a place for the pen when you're carrying it around with you. And that's it. Now you have the perfect tablet. Overall, if you own a computer and on a tight budget or just getting into art, this is probably a great tablet for you. If you have a bigger budget, I'd go for a bigger model, honestly. Gaumon themselves offer some, like the M10K Pro. Of course, there's other companies like Huion and Wacom that offer great tablets, but if you don't have unlimited money right now, I probably wouldn't go with the Wacom right now, as the alternatives are really cheap and only getting better. Especially now that you don't have to charge the pens on these Chinese tablets anymore, there's like no real reason that you would go with the Wacom anymore, apart from very premium feel and the best pen. And yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'd be glad to answer them. Make sure to like and subscribe and see you in three years.